Hello everybody, welcome to my winter 2019-2020 uh, forecast. We're going to be looking at temperature anomalies, precipitation anomalies, snowfall anomalies, and then finally my overall forecast right at the end, so make sure to stay tuned. And also, if you do enjoy these type of videos, I, uh, please consider subscribing and leaving a like, and it'll show that I that you guys want more of these type of videos. And I'll probably be making my next one right around October-ish, uh, somewhere probably in mid-October will be my next update. I'll try to do one once a month, all the way until uh, December when winter actually starts. So let's get right into it. Here, we're looking at our temperature anomalies first. All the keys for the maps will be right over here, right to the uh, to the right of all the of all the graphics. So, in that blue shade, we're below average, slightly to moderately below average. The darker shade is moderately below average. Some of these areas could definitely see more. Uh, I don't. I didn't think it was gonna. I don't think it's gonna be well below average. I don't think it's uh, gonna be that cold all winter consistently but i think some areas especially like this these areas will definitely be seeing some arctic blasts more frequently which will probably be moving a bit more to the east after the uh impact the midwest will probably move to the east but become a little bit weaker then you'll also see for the southwest for parts of texas arizona new mexico colorado utah uh nevada we're, uh, all those four corner states and then also Oregon and California, we're going to be seeing slightly to moderately above average. That orange shade is the moderately above average. And then that yellow shade is that slightly above average. That's where you could consistently, in that moderate shade, you could be seeing consistent warm temperatures. But nothing that would be uh, super crazy. Nothing like 20 degrees consistently above average, which is usually when I... Uh, give out my well above average or if it's 20 degrees usually below average consistently that's when I usually give out my well below average but I don't think uh, we'll actually be in into any of those third shades of of uh, above or below average here's my precipitation forecast we're we have uh, a lot going on on this one let's go from west to east so over in the northwest over here we're seeing above average conditions over for right around Seattle, we're going to be seeing that uh, right around that western uh, area of Washington State, we're going to be seeing well above average precipitation, and then around that near uh, near just just to the east of of that well above uh, well above average in Washington, and then also for the coasts of Oregon and California, we're going to be seeing moderately above average, and then finally slightly above average right outside of that into kind of those Cascadia mountains that's where you could be seeing slightly above average and even into northern california now over here for pretty much the the rocky mountains we're going to be seeing slightly to moderately below average for uh anywhere from let's see new mexico into even mo even uh easternmost oregon and washington you could be seeing slightly to moderately below average this is where i think you could be experiencing uh some noticeably below average temperatures so you'll be able to notice that you haven't been seeing as many days with precipitation uh than you normally would mainly because of the jet stream track uh you're going to be seeing tons of of moisture over the uh, over um, northwestern coast, but then it kind of gets ripped up by those mountains, and it's probably not going to be able to proceed. If we had a jet stream that's kind of like this, then those uh, systems wouldn't have to go through the mountains, and then you would see above average here. But not looking like that's the case for the, uh, this year. Here uh, now to the east, we have our well above average section right over here for some of those gulf states and parts of the southeast so for kentucky um into missouri down to louisiana and then into the carolinas and virginia anywhere in inside of that darkest shade of green you're going to be seeing well above average con um precipitation now uh in this moderate shade of green you're going i mean in this medium shade of green you'll be seeing moderately above average so noticeably above average conditions for these for these areas right over here i was looking at the 
um, data from um, like just like a regular year that looks to set up just like this one. And usually we do see an uptick in uh precipitation right around the this area usually when we're in a when we're in a neutral stage which is kind of a scientific term and i might actually make a video explaining what that means later on uh in this month now in that slightly above average you could be seeing not noticeably but just you'll just um kind of be like eh, it was a bit it was a bit uh wetter this year or snowier depends where you are now, we're going to go on to everybody's favorite part, the snowfall anomalies, right behind the overall forecast. Usually, a lot of people like to see this, um, and that's why I make this uh, product. So, uh, we'll start from west to east again. Slightly above average in the north northwest, where you could be seeing those cooler temperatures combined with that uh, above average precipitation. So, th you'll be seeing definitely some, some more snowfall then for that same area that was kind of the drier you'll be seeing slightly below average and then below average down for those southern rockies moderately below average there i also shaded in all of the map with the colors because i'm not going to go through every area that does and doesn't see snowfall so just know if you don't regularly see snowfall you might not see snowfall this year you probably won't so uh just take that into account so i'm not saying that uh, let's see, like somewhere in Florida, uh, somewhere in South Florida is going to get snowfall this year. I'm just saying that, uh, I'm just, I'm just shading in everything because I'm not going to go through every single little area that doesn't usually see snowfall. Now onto the east where we have, uh, a lot more action. We have a well above average section right in here for parts of Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, into the southern half of upstate New York, into parts of eastern Pennsylvania, northwest New Jersey, and then into northwest Connecticut, northwest uh, Massachusetts, and then into coastal Maine. You could be seeing well above average. That's where you look to get hit with pretty much every storm track. So you have the Alberta Clipper that kind of goes like this. Then you have this type of nor'easter that goes like that. There's another nor'easter that kind of sticks a little bit inland. That's where these areas could be affected. And then there's a couple more, is including lake effects now. So pretty much this area is going to be the bullseye for all this precipitation, uh, all the snowfall. Then in this moderate shade of, uh, of blue, you see this above average. So this will be noticeably above average. You'll be able to notice that you did get uh, a little bit more snow than normal. And that extends all the way down into the, some of uh, pro northern Georgia, northern Alabama, northern Mississippi. That's where you could definitely be seeing above average snowfall. And then slightly above average uh, anywhere from the Dakotas southward, and then uh, filling in pretty much the entire rest of the East Coast. Now, we're going to go on to my overall forecast. So, um, sorry that says snowfall anomalies on top. I forgot to change that. But, here's my overall forecast. So, we'll start from west to east as normal. Cooler and snowier for that uh, northwest coast for Oregon and Washington. That's where you're gonna be seeing that cooler temper those cooler temperatures combined with that with that uh, m moisture, and that's gonna pretty much be the reason why you're seeing more snow and colder conditions than uh, normal. Then here for the ro uh, for the northern Rocky Mountains, you'll be seeing colder and slightly less snowfall for this winter. Anywhere that's not shaded, uh, in that uh, that's not shaded in any color, that's where you where you're pretty, pretty much going to be seeing either flip-flop, probably more of a flip-flop closer to this area. This is where I could see more of a flip-flop, but then over here, it's just going to be average. So if you're here, it's probably going to be more average. If it's if you're here, you're probably going to go from cold to warm to cold to warm. So it'll just be a flip-flop um, kind of season. Now, into the southwest, we have warmer and drier there for the southern Rockies, southern California, southern Nevada, southern, uh, well, actually most of Arizona, and then uh, southwestern New Mexico. That's where you could be seeing warmer conditions co combined with the drier air, and it's just not going to be a good combination, not going to be seeing a lot of rainfall, and it's also going to be uh, fairly uh, uh, hotter than normal. 
then we see this just warmer and this orange just warmer not dr not particularly more drier uh more dry but it'll, it'll still be drier than normal just won't be that noticeable now onto the midwest where you could be seeing the heart of the cold area so this is where you could um be seeing most of your arctic blasts like uh if you if you remember last year we had a ton of arctic blasts that came in through minnesota the dakotas wisconsin michigan and uh really it, it was a pretty big arctic blast record breaking arctic arctic blast nothing uh i mean we could uh, definitely have some pretty close contenders for record breakers but i don't think we could uh we're going to break the record this year for coldest temperatures uh but that heart of the cold definitely would extend into Montana over here, but uh, it kind of, I uh, covered it up with this colder, slightly less snowfall area. Then for this pinkish area over here, this is the Arctic blast, this kind of pink red reddish area. That's where you could be uh, seeing those Arctic shots. Every once in a while, you'll be seeing one of those Arctic blasts kind of go a bit more south and then uh, and, and just uh, get some of those areas over here. And that also includes parts of upstate New York, which could definitely be hit with it. These Arctic blasts are going to kind of probably start over here and then move over to the east a little bit. Just weaken just a tad bit before they get to the east. Now... Uh, down near the s more southern areas of the U.S., we're going to be looking at uh, our storm track. Now, usually storms will, will kind of be like this. That's why I have my winter battle zone, which is basically going to be winter, uh, wintry mix, icy conditions, all of that just uh, summarized into that one purple area. Of course, every, every system is going to be different, so some systems might be like that, some might be like that, some might be like this, so... This this is just basically going to be a summarization. You could be seeing some snow also for uh, the panhandle of Texas and o Oklahoma over here. And then probably more snowfall over the Maryland, Washington, D.C., uh, northern Virginia, nor uh, the pretty much most of West Virginia, and then into southern Pennsylvania. That's where you'll be seeing more of the snowfall. Then on the southern side of those systems, of course, we're going to be seeing rainfall. That includes the um, parts of the Carolinas into Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, southern, southeastern Texas, and then into Florida, of course. Then into the northeast, we have our lots of snowfall area right here in this blue, which uh, anywhere in here, you'll be seeing um, moderately above average or well above average. Most of the well above average area is in this worst of winter, where you could definitely be seeing the most snowfall uh, compared to your average than pretty much anywhere else in the country. And that's where you'll be seeing uh, just a bunch of systems move in here. Though, If a system moves like that, a system moves like this, system moves a bit inland, it'll still hit them. That's why they're in the worst of winter, because pretty much any system you throw at them, even if a system goes like this, like an Alberta Clipper, they'll still get hit by this. And also, one thing I want to know is that you'll definitely be seeing coastal systems this year, uh, definitely for uh, parts of the coastal northeast, like New York City, uh, Boston, and uh, some other cities around the coast, like Portland, Maine, you'll all be definitely seeing some coastal systems, probably a bit more from what I've been seeing, probably a bit more to the east. They're looking to track just slightly more to the east, uh, and that's why you'll be seeing more snowfall for the east coast. Anyways, guys, if you did enjoy that, please consider subscribing. It would greatly help the channel, and also leave a like. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.